Hey, hey, hey. Tab for another Out of This World story from our space. My, 31 male, ex-girlfriend, 29 female, found me and wanted to hang out, but I just ignored her after she broke my heart. Backstory. In 2015, I met this woman at college. Let's call her Casey. We had so many things in common and we instantly got close. She asked me out and it was a wonderful relationship, or so I thought. We had dreams together, send X-rated pics once in a while. We do a lot of stuff together, not sex yet. In 2019, Christmas time, I was going to propose to her after I give her parents and siblings gifts. I even gave her mom who hates me a gift. Casey works at the hospital, so she'll get out of work later, or so I thought. 5 p.m., she didn't come to her parents' place, but I came and decided to give everyone gifts. When I give her younger sister, 20 female, let's call her Sherry, a laptop, she cries and hugs me because she always wanted one for school. Casey's father, a new barbecue grow. Moments later, Sherry told me I couldn't contain it anymore and cried harder. I asked what's the matter. She immediately grabbed me to her room and her father came along as well. She kept saying I'm sorry so many times. I was confused and why? She then showed me a pregnancy test and told me that it belongs to Casey. I completely lost it. I wanted to know why and how long was the affair. Sherry informed me that the affair happened in the beginning of 2019, while I was working a lot at my factory job. She goes to see him. What makes matters worse is that Casey's mom was the one who showed the affair partner to Casey. Apparently, in the month of November, Casey found out she's pregnant and she begged Sherry not to tell anyone after Sherry found the test. When she told me everything, my world came crashing down and I decided to leave. But before I left, I thanked Sherry and her father. Let's call him Max. Max apologized and said that if I leave, you would completely understand. We shook hands and I said thank you. I just looked at Casey's mom and I then left my ex's house and just drove away and didn't look back. Max and Sherry got furious with Casey's mom. Let's call her Jane. Around 7 p.m. Christmas time, I informed my family on what happened and they all comforted me. 11 p.m. my phone began blowing up with phone calls and text messages of my ex saying she can explain. I didn't answer back. I changed my number, deleted my social media, and changed my email. As much as I want closure, I didn't want to see her face. Fast forward to mid of 2020. One of my friends informed me that the affair partner who got Casey pregnant ran away after he found out he's the father. Karma. And they're looking for him. I simply said, who cares? Fast forward to last month, I see a number I've never seen before. I answered, and it was my ex. My ex begged me to talk to her and possibly give her a chance at my favorite restaurant. I responded, why should I after you did what you did? She rambled on and I just ignored her because I don't want to go through the same pain that she had put me through. Casey began gaslighting me and her friends and her mom, calling me a coward for not seeing her again. I told Jane, you have the audacity to say that after what you've done. She rambled on. I just hung up and blocked Jane and my ex's number. I informed her friends what happened, and they left me alone. Our first reaction comes from Insane Ike 22 Why would you ever want to deal with a mother-in-law that lies and an ex-girlfriend that will never be trustworthy? Let your ex suffer the consequences of her actions, ghost her and anyone with her. The OP responds, Yeah, I just left and didn't look back, and moved forward. She went from lovely couple to single mom. Also my sisters, I got four, wanted to beat her of. I told them she's not worth it. Our next thoughts from Davloco6913. I always laugh at the I could explain line. This is the precursor to gaslighting and getting told how it is your fault they have no morals. Lon Detman says, think about this. If the mother-in-law helped Casey cheat so easily, what do you think she is doing behind Max's back? God only knows how many times Jane has cheated on Max. And lastly from Scary Inspector8315. Damn, like a boss. Indifference destroys cheaters. Keep moving forward, King. On to the next adventure. Cheating girlfriend. Hey y'all, recently found out my girlfriend cheated on me. Wanted to share my story and get your thoughts on it. I'm 36, she's 37. Long story, but here we go. I've known her since we were in college, almost 20 plus years. And we were super tight back in the day. I always had a crush on her but never made a move for a number of reasons. But the feelings were always there and I could tell she had them too. Fast forward to the summer of 2021. We're all grown up. We've stayed friends and we chat every once in a while, and she comes to town for a conference and wants to meet up for dinner. We hang out every night she's here, and on the last night she's in town, she confesses a deep love for me, that I'm her soulmate, and she really wants to be with me and build something serious and doesn't want me messing around if we're together. Mind you, we live in two different cities in the same state, a couple hundred miles apart, but a quick one-hour flight. I'm overjoyed because I've felt this way forever, but it's never worked out. 
we agreed to talk about it and try to get together soon. A few months go by because of hectic work schedules and we finally make plans to see each other. We go to the happiest place on earth and it's amazing. At first, there's some nerves, but we had a blast together. We were finally intimate and the fireworks were real. As we left, we didn't make anything official and just played it cool like, Hey, I can't wait to see you again. Let's get together real soon. Soon as I got home, she wants to come down and spend New Year's Eve with me. I'm stoked and can't think of anyone else I'd want to spend it with. For the entire month, we talk and text on the phone. I'm starting to think, okay, maybe this long distance thing can really work. All the while, I'm on dating acts, and so is she, and chatting with girls, but don't go on any dates. Just keeping the water warm in case things don't work out. I actually deleted my dating acts a few days before she came to visit because I knew I just wanted to be with her. At this point, it's all good. Nothing is exclusive and we're nothing official. Fast forward to New Year's Eve. She comes down, we have the best three days. Incredible connection, super passionate in the bedroom, and just an all-around great time basking in each other's company. Before she leaves, I ask if she wants to be my girlfriend. She says yes, and I'm thrilled. She deletes her dating app right in front of me. We talk about being monogamous and exclusive. She's all about it. She flies home, and for the first few days, it's awesome. Then, randomly on the phone one night, she tells me that some guys are testing her and DMing her after she posted some pics of us. So I ask, what are you saying to them? Are you flying? She goes, yeah, just keeping it short. Then she tells me about this guy who she's had an on and off again relationship for six years. I reached out to her and was super excited for us. That made me super uncomfortable and I let her know. She told me not to worry about it and that she'd never spend time with him alone. Only with other people if there was a work event with old colleagues. They used to work together, but she's moved on to a different area. So I'm already starting to feel insecure about it. But I trust her and move on. A week later, she's going to meet up with some old colleagues for a drink and then get home early because she's flying to Costa Rica for a week to spend time with her dad. I say, cool, have a great time. I'm off to sleep, but text her, call me when you're headed home. So yeah, I never heard back and I started getting that weird pit in my stomach feeling. I finally convince myself that I'm tripping and fall asleep around 2 a.m. Wake up the next morning and nothing. So I call her and she sounds a little different on the phone. I ask how her night was, and she goes, it was fine, had a few drinks, and caught up with friends. I could tell she was rushing to get to the airport, so we wrapped up the call and I'm feeling better about it. Over the next few weeks, I have this gut feeling that something happened that night, but she denies it all and says she only loves me, blah blah blah. Fast for a few weeks and a trip where I met her parents. I get home in the next day and for some reason directly asked her if anything happened the night before she left for her trip. Was the dude she was seeing on and off there? Finally she told me the truth. She cheated on me, as she said it was for closure and to close a chapter in her life. Felt like she meant it. I asked a bunch of questions and felt like I got what I needed to move forward in a relationship with her. I gave her a second chance, but she also refused to cut off communication with this other person because his dad was sick and that he was there for her in her dark times or whatever BS, but that she would never see him again. I tried to accept to move forward so quickly, but I was so pissed. Two weeks later, we got together for Valentine's Day and that was supposed to be the reset for a relationship. We talked about the elf in the room, agreed to move on, and be honest with each other. Next day, she asked me when the last time I got an SCD test was. So I told her I got tested the prior week. No, we didn't have sex after she cheated on me until Valentine's Day weekend. She was curious and asked why. I shared that it was for a peace of mind. For the next two days, she keeps pressing me for the truth. So I finally told her after she assured me that it was okay. So I told her that a few days after she told me she cheated on me, I woke up with a bump on my tongue, and that I freaked out and wanted to get tested to make sure I was good. Which I was, phew. And that if she never cheated on me, this wouldn't have happened. She flipped and said I thought she was dirty. If I did, I wouldn't have slept with her again. And she broke up with me. She said she couldn't trust me. Ha! <laughs> then she says we should take time to evaluate what we want and maybe reconnect in the future. And that she only wants to be with me. What that F? Should I just block her? Tell her it's over? I'm struggling with some wild emotions. Ask for advice, you'll get it. First up from Relaxative666. Finally, she told me the truth. She cheated on me and said it was for closure and to close a chapter in her life. Give her closure and close this chapter on her life where you were her boyfriend. Next bit of advice from Wild Breakproot 9177 Block her manipulating behind and have your best life. Next one from No Minimum 1886 Well, it looks like you can't trust her and you're early in the relationship. The closer story is what you guessed. B.S. If I were you, I'd cut my loss and move on. Apparently, 
Your feelings for you ain't strong enough to keep her from cheating on you. Consistent Cat 1603 says, Dude, break up with her. Don't fall with that closure crap. F her. She doesn't love you. I've seen this crap before. They keep contact with her ex or some colleague or friend, and they go to a trip and boom. Man, you deserve better. She's just using you. Leave before crap gets serious. Eventually, she's going to do it again and gaslight you and love bomb you. Have some confidence and leave this stupid freaking whore. OP replies, Thanks, man. Definitely worried about the repeat of the same BS. No more wasted energy on a lost cause. Cranach closes this story out. So she cheated with him because it was more important to her to close this chapter than to remain faithful to you. You should wonder how many more chapters she's got to close until she can be faithful. Be happy you didn't get an STD and don't test your luck further, which means to get rid of her. You wanted to be with her, tried it out, and now you know that despite what she said, she never felt the same. She lied to you the whole time. You deserve better. Moving on. Wife's affair with cousin's husband. What? Wife had an affair for two years with brother-in-law, her cousin's husband. Cousin and brother-in-law don't have any kids after 15 years of marriage. The affair started when brother-in-law started helping out with my kids. 975. While I was out of town. To set the context, I have to say the brother-in-law is very good with kids. And kids love to be around him. Wife claimed that it was only an emotional affair and it started because I was sometimes gone for two to three weeks at a time. International trips. And she really needed to lean on someone. She admitted that they might have kissed a few times, but nothing more than that. Given that everything else was good in our life, and that my wife has been an excellent mother, I agreed to give it another chance in the condition that we take brother-in-law out of our lives. It has now been more than two years since I discovered this, and we completely cut off the brother-in-law from our lives. She still sees her cousin, but her cousin does not officially know about the affair. Cousin has a terminal illness and would thought it best not to burden her. We tried to work out our marriage over the last two years, but our marriage has turned into a dead bedroom. Finally, after two years of frustration, I talked to her about getting a divorce. I told her that I have forgot about what happened, but since she seemed to have no desire for me, I have no reason to stay. My wife was countered that by taking the brother-in-law out of her lives, we have cut herself from the larger family. We avoid family gatherings where he is present and caused hurt to our kids. We have gotten very attached to brother-in-law. She says that she feels guilty for excluding her kids from the larger family and taking their friend, brother-in-law, away. Lastly, she claims that since I cannot forgive the brother-in-law, it means that I have not really forgiven her either, and she cannot sleep with me because I have not forgiven her. I told her that I have already come a long way by giving us another chance, but bringing the brother-in-law back in her lives is completely non-negotiable. Seeing his face and hearing his name triggers toxic memories and I am unable to handle them. I wrong here. Should I show even more forgiveness and compassion to allow him again in our lives? Update. First of all, thanks to all of you for your comments. I wasn't expecting much of a response, but I am overwhelmed by the support here. Now that I'm reading the comments and others' perspectives, I'm seeing this a lot clearer. But want to share a few more details. I come from a fairly religious, conservative background. Grew up with little money, but made it quite big at a fairly young age, the 30s. We have a million dollar house paid in cash, healthy investments, and nice cars. We go on international family vacations at least once a year, if not more. Most of our marriage, I have been focused on providing for the family for things that I didn't have in my childhood. This meant working super long hours and pretty much working for two to three weeks at a stretch when a new product launch was around the corner. Her whole basis for dead bedroom is that she doesn't feel affection towards me because she feels that I see her as a liar. It took her two years to even admit that it was an affair. She had previously maintained that she just used to have coffee and talk about life. And one day, things got emotional and they kissed. But decided to keep things purely platonic over the next two years. During the next two years, I tried to reconcile and kept telling her I need full and complete honesty for us to yield and move forward. After I found some hotel key cards, she claimed that they were given to her as souvenirs by brother-in-law. When I dug more, I found tons of tricks to bars at late hours on Google directions. Finally, I received an anonymous email from someone claiming to know about the relationship and they gave me the same hotel names for which I found hotel cards. At this point, she accepted that they had an emotional affair. This was the first time she admitted to an affair. But after this confession, it was downhill. She says that I have no trust in her for responding to and entertaining anonymous emails and not believing her that there was no sex involved. I started seeing a therapist and he advised me that sometimes people are embarrassed to admit their mistakes, but if you think that otherwise she's a good person, stop asking her about specific actions in the affair and work on reconciliation. So now she holds a grudge for me digging deeper and just not taking her word. Frankly, I stopped caring about what actually went down and just want happiness for my kids. I built all this and did all this hard work for the family. I offered her take 50% of all assets and we can have 50% kids' custody. 
She counters that she will agree on divorce if I guarantee her that we will not move back to our hometown. We had made a cross-country move from my career six years ago. I told her that I cannot guarantee that. I already stepped down in my company from the VP position to a consultant position because I needed a mental break. I told her that I will give her a guarantee to move back to her hometown, where we are from, and where the marriage started. She doesn't agree and keeps giving me guilt trips for disturbing the kids' lives, private school, elite sports coaching, etc. She tells me that, why don't you just divorce me, but still live together and co-parent together? I told her that I'm not a floor mat. But I guess, as I'm writing this, the answer becomes more clear to me that I don't deserve this. After all that I'm willing to compromise on, it seemed that she just doesn't get it. First reaction from CBD outside. No, this sounds like blackmail. It takes time to yield a marriage if both people are fully committed. She is mourning him. She may be waiting until he is single. Ugly thoughts to speculate on. If you seek divorce, put stipulations on him spending time with your children. Also, no carrying this secret. The reason you are getting a divorce is because of their affair and her inability to fully commit to your relationship. Next thought from Monkey Moves 101. After her cousin dies, she's going after him. I wouldn't stick around for this to happen either. Cranock chimes in. Sounds a lot like your wife struggles with the consequences of her affair and tries to manipulate you by withdrawing sex from you. What she told you there is simple. Either you allow me to be in contact with mother-in-law again, or we will never have sex again. Forget all she said about family gatherings, the kids losing their friend and all that. She didn't care that this might happen when she had her affair. Otherwise, she would have never started her affair. She also doesn't care about that all now. She just wants to have her lover back in her life, and she told you exactly that. This is blackmail at its finest. You either do this or you'll never get that from me. If you have thought about divorce before she said that, then you should meet with a lawyer as soon as you can. Your wife is not interested in a marriage with you. She just wants your brother-in-law back in her life. She made her decision and sticks to it. Time for you to make your decision. Quahog 1945 finishes out. Your wayward wife is punishing you for separating her from her affair partner. She's only sorry she can't stoop her affair partner while you're enforcing the separation. Your wayward wife is waiting for her cousin to die so she can have the man she wants. Her affair partner. Tell the extended family the truth, OP. Your wayward wife doesn't merit your protection. 